good morning children so here we are starting with a new chapter that is books of original entry journal so let us begin with the chapter and introduction let us discuss the meaning of journal first of all as you can read here journal is a book of original entry in which the transactions are recorded first of all as and when they take place so if you remember the meaning of accounting which we have done that accounting is the art of recording classifying summarizing analyzing and interpreting financial transactions and we have also done the accounting cycle also so if you remember the very first step in accounting process is to record the transactions in a chronological or in a date wise order that means as and when the transactions are uh, uh, occurring they are on the very same date they are recorded in a serial order so this work of recording is done in a separate book which is known as journal journal is also known as book of original entry why because the transactions first of all are recorded in journal that means it is the book which includes or involves the original entry therefore journal is also known as the book of original entry now the definition this definition is given by professor carter and according to professor carter the journal as originally used is a book of prime entry prime entry means the original entry here in which the transactions are copied in order of date from a memorandum or waste book the entries as they are copied and classified into debits and credits so as to facilitate their being correctly posted afterwards in the ledger if you remember we have discussed the accounting cycle there are a number of steps in the accounting process first of all we prepare journal then we prepare ledger then we prepare trial balance then we prepare the trading account followed by profit and loss account and ultimately the balance sheet and the process continues so journal is the book of original entry why because the recording of transactions takes place first of all initially originally in the books of journal and journal also helps in the preparation of further steps be, uh, without journal ledger cannot be prepared without ledger the trial balance cannot be prepared and all the things are inter related so this is the meaning and definition of journal moving ahead with the advantages of journal what is the advantage obviously we are keeping a systematic record uh, in a date wise manner so obviously it is beneficial so what are the other advantages of journal let us discuss first of all as transactions in journal are entered as and when they take place the possibility of omission of a transaction in the books of accounts is minimized in common parlance it means that we in journal we are recording the transactions as and when they are occurring on a daily basis so that means there are very minimal or very less chances of omitting or skipping any transaction or missing out any transaction then secondly as transactions in journal are recorded in chronological order chronological order here means date wise order this we have uh, already discussed this term in the meaning of accounting it is very easy or easy to locate a particular transaction when required that means it is very easy or ease uh, to record the transactions uh, as and when required because these are prepared date wise so we can find out any uh, transaction of a particular date etc point number 3 once the transaction is recorded in journal posting in the ledger can be made as and when convenient obviously because we know without journal ledger cannot be prepared so once the journal is prepared as and when it is required by the accountant or the by the business or the firm it can prepare the ledger and lastly journal facilitates cross checking of ledger accounts in case a trial balance does not agree so after soon after preparing the journal we prepare the ledger and soon after preparing the ledger we prepare the trial balance and slowly and gradually when we discuss that chapter we'll discuss that trial balance has to tally there are two sides which should be equal so if at all they are not tallying it means that there is some problem in uh, might be in the preparation of trial balance if it is correct then there might be there is a problem in ledger so what is the problem in ledger that can be verified from the journal so these are the advantages of journal now the format of journal very important there are five columns in the format of journal this is the format or performer of journal 
at the top of the format or the columns definitely you have to write the word journal otherwise your marks will be deducted either in class 11th or 12th it doesn't matter you have to mention the word journal as a heading uh, above this format so as you can see there are five columns the first column is the date column second one is the particulars column now date column that means in on what date the transaction has occurred if suppose if you have sold goods on 5th december then in the date column you'll write december 5 2020 then particulars now in journal further as we move further with the chapter we'll discuss that in journal the transactions are recorded in an entry form so the entry which is also known as journal entry will be recorded in the particulars column the third column is the ledger folio folio here means the page number so ledger folio column basically uh, as a student you don't use much but obviously as an accountant in business or etc this column is very much used basically this uh, column shows you that the entry which is posted here in the particulars column this entry is posted on which page number in the books of ledger so ledger folio column is for that then as we have already discussed beforehand that uh, just like we human beings have a number of languages in the similar fashion accounting has two languages one is the debit uh, language and one is the credit one so in journal also the last two columns as you can see is the column for account uh, amount sorry the last two columns are for amount the first amount column or you can say the fourth column is the debit column that means whatever amount is being debited will be posted here and whatever amount is being credited that will be posted in the credit column so these are the four five columns of uh, format of journal and the serial order the hierarchy the sequence cannot be changed so first column will be date second column will be particulars third column will be leisure folio fourth column will be debit amount and fifth column will be credit amount in accounting uh, the short form for debit is dr dot and the short form for credit is cr dot so this is the format for journal moving ahead these are the rules of debit and credit what needs to be debited and what needs uh, needs to be credited this we have already uh, discussed while discussing the chapter double entry system so kindly i would suggest that kindly go through the video of that chapter once again children before you proceed with the numericals but anyhow we'll be revising the golden rules of accounting if you remember in the double entry system and previous chapters also we have discussed that there are three types of accounts namely personal account real account and nominal account we have also done the classification that which item goes in which account for example personal account involves the human beings the artificial uh, institutions etc and the, there are some representative items so what are that you need to revise it from the previous videos then another account is the real account real account basically deals with the tangible and intangible assets that also we have discussed and nominal account nominal account basically deals with the expenses losses incomes and gains that also we have discussed beforehand so anyhow just revising the rules children these are the golden rules of accounting these can be asked as a conceptual question and your entire accounting is based on these uh, golden rules of accounting so the golden rule of accounting of personal account as discussed earlier is debit the receiver and credit the giver so all those um, accounts or the classifications or the items which are coming in personal account if they are receiving anything they will be debited if they are giving anything they will be credited real account the golden rule is debit what comes in and credit what goes out so all those assets which are a part of real account if they are coming in the business they will be debited if they are going out of the business they uh, that will be credited for example if you purchase a machinery machinery is an asset as we have already discussed so if the business purchases a machinery that means a machinery is coming in the business and being a real account machinery will be debited if the same machinery is sold second hand by the business it is going out being a real account it will be credited then nominal account the golden rule says debit all expenses and losses and credit all incomes and gains so basically these are the golden rules of accounting again revising personal account debit the receiver credit the giver real account debit what comes in credit what goes out and nominal account debit all expenses and losses and credit all incomes and 
gates now there are additional uh, rules which we have also discussed before just like points to remember so we'll be revising here once again apart from the golden rules of accounting there are some other uh, basic rules which you might uh, or basically i sh uh, i should say you should be knowing for solving various practical questions so the number one is all assets expenses and losses have a debit balance so besides golden rules these are the various rules which will be helping you while solving the questions related to journal etc i just gave you an example that if the machinery is a real account it is an asset so if the machinery is purchased by the business it is coming in it will be debited but if the machinery is sold by the business it is going out it will be credited but suppose if i ask you what is the general balance of machinery i didn't tell you whether it is going out or it is coming in so in that case you have to apply the point number 1 that since machinery is an asset therefore it will carry a debit balance so these are the rules which will be helpful in such uh, times so revising again point number 1 says all assets expenses and losses have a debit balance point number 2 all liabilities incomes and gains have a credit balance point number 3 if there is an increase in the balance of assets now since the assets carry a debit balance so if the value of assets increases it will be debited more on the other hand on the contrary if the value of assets decreases it will be credited so as you can see on the contrary if there is a decrease in the balance of assets it is credited in the similar manner the fourth point if there is an increase in the balance of liabilities it is credited on the contrary if there is a decrease in the balance of liabilities it is debited just opposite of assets so these are the four points point number 1 all assets expenses and losses carry a debit balance point number 2 all liabilities incomes and gains have a credit balance continuing further since we know by the point 1 that all assets carry a debit balance so if the value of asset increases more we will debit it more and if the value of assets decreases it will be credited opposite and in case of liability since we know by point number 2 that liabilities carry a credit balance so if the value of liabilities increases it will be credited more and if the balance or the value of liability decreases again we'll just do the opposite thing it will be debited so besides golden rules points to remember which we have discussed here so these basically these are the points which you should remember for moving ahead with the practical chapters now we are starting with some of the basic journal entries there are a number of entries which will be discussed so uh, we'll be starting with the very first entry that is the started business with cash as we know whenever a business is started the owner or the uh, proprietor or any one who is starting a business needs to invest a certain amount of money to set up or to establish a business so this is the term started business with cash and if you remember if we have discussed the basic terminology chapter of accounting in which we have discussed the word capital we have discussed the term capital what is capital capital is the amount invested by the proprietor in the business or capital is the amount invested by the owner in the business so this started business with cash the cash here is the capital now remember one thing children all the transactions since if you remember the chapter gap generally accepted accounting principles there we have discussed one concept that is dual con aspect concept and dual aspect concept states that all transactions uh, have two ba uh, two aspects all the transactions have at least two aspect one is debited and one is credited and the debit should always be equal to credit this is what we have discussed in dual aspect so you need to remember that every transaction you come across will be having two aspects one aspect will be debit and one aspect will be credit so in all the entries you have to find out you have to analyze you have to identify which account will be debited and which account will be credited so starting with this one started business with cash uh as soon as you read started business with cash that means cash is being invested in the business obviously by the proprietor so immediately the one thing which should come into your mind is capital so what is the effect of this transaction that cash is coming in the business and it is increasing the capital 
so as you can read here the amount with which the business is started is known as capital it is the amount invested by the owner or proprietor in the business as the uh, as a beginning of an or during an accounting year that means as soon as the accounting this also we have discussed in the gap chapter accounting period concept that the books of accounts of uh, of a business needs to be prepared at regular intervals that's why it is prepared at an interval of 12 months that is one year and this 12 months starts from 1st april uh, of one year to 31st march of next year so at the beginning of the year of an accounting year basically these 12 months are known as accounting year so at the beginning of an accounting year or during an accounting year or at the end of the accounting year irrespective whenever some amount is invested by the proprietor or the owner in the business it is known as capital and also in gap chapter we have discussed the business entity concept which states that business and businessmen in the eyes of accounting are not the same what belongs to business does not belong to businessmen and what belongs to businessmen does not belong to business and this is the reason that this amount of capital invested by the proprietor no doubt it money belongs to the owner only and business also belongs to the owner but in the eyes of accounting owner and business are two different identities therefore the amount which the owner has invested in the business is regarded is treated as a liability for the business so on the assumption that this money has to be returned by the business to the owner therefore this amount of capital will be considered as a liability for the business and whenever you are preparing accounting uh, books of accounts you need to remember one thing that you are preparing the books of accounts from the point of view of the business so in this case as you know that capital is a liability why because this money belongs to the owner and not the business and therefore business needs to return this and therefore capital is kind of a liability it is like a liability for the business and as we have discussed uh, rules here that liabilities carry a credit balance so capital is a liability for the business as per business entity concept and it carries a credit balance so which thing we will credit in the entry is capital what is the other aspect or other effect of this uh, investment is cash is also coming in the business and if you remember cash is an asset cash is a part of real account and what does the golden rule of real account says that debit what comes in and credit what goes out so when the owner invests certain money in the business the cash is coming in and therefore cash being a real account will be debited since it is coming in the business so that means we have got both the aspects what is to be debited cash is to be debited what is to be credited capital is to be credited now after identifying what is to be debited and what is to be credited you have to frame the entry how you will frame as you can see this is the format i have written journal at the top because this is mandatory now since date has not been mentioned here it is just an example therefore i have left date column blank i have left amount column also blank because it is just an example just to explain you how the entry is passed now since we know what is to be debited and what is to be credited so the way of posting such entries or putting uh, passing these entries are whatever is to be debited has to be written first that is cash account debited which account you will debit cash account other than human beings all the aspects will be suffixed by using the word capital a oblique small c this is a short form for account so other than human beings like ram sham rahul etc other than human beings this account word has to be suffixed in each aspect whether it is to be debited or credited but other than human beings in the name of human beings we will not use this word account now cash account debited now whatever it is to be debited needs to be written first so i have written cash account debited now for debited you will write the short form dr and that you will write at the extreme end at the right hand side of particular column then whatever is to be credited you have to write in the next line leaving uh, some space on the left hand side so as you can see i have left some space on the left hand side and whatever is to be credited needs to be prefixed with the word or needs to be started with the word to to so in this 
we have analyzed that cash account is to be debited so that we have written first cash account debited that is dr and capital is to be credited so therefore le next line we have left some space on the left hand side and we have started with the word two because it is to be credited so we have written two capital again it has to be it is not the name of a human being so therefore it has to be suffixed by the word account a oblique c and in bracket as you can see i have written something this what i have written in brackets is known as narration basically it shows that the entry which you have passed what is the reason behind that what is the cause so it is narration according to the amendments it has it is not compulsory to pass the uh, narration you don't have any additional marks but according to the marking schemes of council if you do not write narration you get negative marking that means if you write it you will not get any additional extra marks but if you do not write it then you will lose marks so it is advisable to make it a habit of writing narration so as to protect or uh, 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 so as to not lose your marks so this narration can be started with either word for f o r or it can be started with the word being b e i n g it is up to you which word you use and it is just like a kind of a summary in short that which is depicting that this entry is passed for, for which reason so as i have written for business started with cash that means this entry cash account debited to capital account is passed for a transaction which is business started with cash so this is the manner in which you will pass the journal entries i hope it is clear to you children so this was the first basic entry started business with cash moving ahead second entries related to expenses and incomes as you know besides golden rules we have discussed certain rules which needs to be followed that all expenses losses carry a debit balance and all incomes and gains carry a credit balance do remember this rule while we discuss the point number 2 entries related to expenses and incomes expenses expenses basically means that all those amount uh, which has which the business has paid for day to day uh, transactions or uh, basically all those uh, day to day uh, whatever the business is paying for expenses for minimal day to day working so expenses such as commission paid purchases rent paid salary paid interest paid etc so these are the examples of expenses this we have already discussed while discussing the classification of accounts in the previous chapters so expenses such as commission paid purchases rent paid salary paid interest paid telephone charges paid miscellaneous expenses paid electricity uh, paid freight outward paid carriage outward paid inward paid etc so these expenses carry a debit balance on the contrary incomes such as now these things received will become an income so on the contrary incomes such as commission received sales rent received interest received miscellaneous receipt sale of old newspapers etc carry a credit balance because we have already discussed the rule and also because expenses and incomes are a part of nominal account and the golden rule of nominal account also says that we will debit all expenses and losses and we will credit all incomes and gains so this is so because all these expenses and incomes are a part of nominal account which follows the rule that debit all expenses and losses and credit all incomes and gains so in this case as you can see now one thing you need to remember children in case of expenses or in case of income even if it is not mentioned that whether it is paid or received in cash or not you will assume it to be incurred in cash unless and until something specifically has been specified so even suppose for example if the question says rent paid 5000 it is not saying that rent is paid in cash 5000 but it is simply saying rent paid 5000 so you need to remember that rent being a nominal account in case of nominal account only if the word cash is not mentioned and if any other information is also not mentioned specifically 
then we assume that all those nominal accounts whether it is expenses or incomes are incurred in cash and one very important point children that in case of nominal uh, account since we are assuming that the, these are to be uh, incurred in cash so even if the name of the person is given we will not take the name of the person or we will not take the person's account in consideration for example if the question says rent paid 5000 to ram so we know that rent being a nominal account is assumed to have been incurred in cash so we have nothing to do with ram we will not involve the the name of ram or his account in the books of account we will just involve two aspects will be rent the expense itself and cash we will have nothing to do with ram this is very important point in case of nominal account now as you can see cash account being a real account will be credited in case of expenses cash account will be credited whenever the expenses are paid cash account will always be credited because when you are paying the uh, expenses that means for example if you are paying rent 5000 to ram what is the effect of this transaction the business will be giving 5000 to ram that means 5000 is going out of the business and cash being a real account if it is going out it will be credited so cash account being a real account will be credited in case of an expense paid since it is going out of the business on the contrary cash account being a real account will be debited in case of an income received since it is coming in the business so just the opposite of expenses paid if the incomes have been received again it is assumed that since it is a nominal account it will be received in cash and if it is received in cash that means cash is coming in the business and we know that income is a nominal account so it says debit what comes in and credit what goes out so in that case what will happen the income or because of income the cash is coming in the business therefore in case of income received always the cash account will be debited and in case of expenses paid always the cash account will be credited as you can see the entries here children for mat of journal the first entry is for expenses paid and the second entry is for income received in the date column i have written the serial number because date was not given here so for expenses paid we know that cash account will always be credited so the entry will will be formed as expenses account debited because expenses carry a debit balance here the name of expense will be specified if it is rent paid then rent account debited if it is salary paid salary account debited if it is wages paid wages account debited and so on to cash account and in bracket for narration you will write for expenses paid in cash narration is framing of narration is up to you you can write in, or frame it as uh, as you want second entry is for income received and whenever the income is received cash is coming in the business and therefore cash is being debited so the entry will be cash account debited to income account for income received in cash note expenses and incomes will assume to have been incurred and received in cash if the word cash is not specified in the question that we have already discussed this rule will not follow in case of outstanding expenses and outstanding income because outstanding expenses and outstanding income becomes your uh, your liabilities and assets respectively so that is that is having a separate accounting treatment which we will discuss further moving ahead with the third entry that is related to purchase of goods now if you remember we have discussed in the basic terminology chapter goods means those items in which the business deals for example for a furniture dealer furniture tables chairs etc will be goods for a stationery dealer pen pencil register etc will be goods for a general merchant dealer uh, dealer soaps detergent chips etc will be goods so whenever the goods are purchased the items in which the business deals are purchased we use the word purchases and there can be either the purchase can be in cash or it can be on credit there are two possibilities either it can be in cash or it can be in credit so in both the aspects the entries will be a little bit of dif uh, different there can be a number of cases case number a when the question expressly mentions 
that the purchases are in cash that means when the question itself specifies that purchase of goods have been made in cash so even if the name of the person is given similar rule even if the name of person is given we do not have to take it into consideration when uh, now remember one thing children whenever the goods are purchased whether it is in cash or it is in credit or both irrespective purchase account will always be debited always purchase account will always be debited now coming to what is to be credited either the cash will be credited if it is a cash purchase or the supplier will be credited if it is on credit because in that case the supplier will become a creditor a liability for the business and we know that liability carry a credit balance so case number a is when the question expressly mentions that the purchases are in cash that means when the question specifically specifies that question uh, purchases are made in cash so if the purchases are in cash you don't have to do anything with the name of the person you just have to see purchase account will be debited because it is an expense and cash account will be credited because being a real account cash is going out since the payment is made in cash so as you can see purchase account will be debited since it is an expense as per nominal account on the other hand cash account will be credited since cash is going out of the business as per real account now note in such cases even if the name of the supplier is given we will credit cash account and his name will be ignored as we have seen here now b case the second case can be when the question expressly mentions that the goods are purchased on credit in the first case question stated that the purchases are in cash and in second case the question is stating clearly that the goods are purchased on credit so in that case now as we know whether it is purchased in cash or credit purchase account will always be debited if it is purchased in cash cash account will be credited and if it is purchased on credit then suppliers account will be credited why because payment has yet not been made to him that means it becomes a liability for the business and therefore it carries a credit balance so as you can see purchase account will be debited since it is an expense as per nominal account on the other hand supplier's account will be credited since he will become the creditor for the business to whom the business is liable to pay back the outstanding amount this is so because creditors are a liability and carry a credit balance now note in such cases even if the name of the supplier is not given we will credit supplier's account that means even if the name of the person is not given even if the name of the supplier is not given then to we if the name is given we will credit the name of the person if the name is not given then we will credit supplier without the word account because it is a human being as the word account is not suffixed to the name of a human being case number c or three third case when nothing is mentioned in the question regarding cash or credit we know if the purchase in cash we will debit purchase and credit cash if the purchase in credit then we will debit purchase and credit supplier but if the thing is mentioned in the question the question is simply saying purchase goods rupees 5000 it is not telling you whether it is purchased in cash or it is purchased in credit so it will be assumed to be a credit purchase that means if the question is silent if nothing is mentioned in the question whether the purchase is in cash or credit then we will assume that the goods are purchased on credit and we will debit the purchase account and credit the supplier account the same thing which we have discussed purchase account will be debited since it is a it is an expense as per nominal account on the other hand supplier's account will be credited since he will become the creditor for the business note in such cases even if the name of the supplier is not given we will credit supplier's account the same note without the word account since it is a human being now let us discuss few example to make it more clear to you children example number 1 purchase goods for rupees 20000 in cash now the word cash is specifically mentioned here now whenever the goods are purchased whether in cash or credit purchase account will always be debited so that means here 
Purchase account will be debited and since the goods are purchased in cash, so cash account will be credited because cash is going out. So as you can see in the journal format, the first entry is purchase account debited to cash account and amount will be 20,000. And when you are writing the amount in the debit column, it will be adjacent to the debit uh, particular and when you are writing in the, the amount in the credit column it will be in front of the account which you are crediting that means see i have shown 20000 rupees in front of cash account in the credit column so you, so you have to make it very clear then example number 2 is purchase goods from shreya rupees 20000 in cash now again goods are purchased in cash but the name of the supplier shreya is also given so if the goods are purchased in cash we do not have to consider Shreya. Normally, the entry purchase account will be debited whenever the goods are purchased and since it is purchased in cash, so cash account will be credited. We will not involve the name of Shreya anywhere. Third point, purchase goods from Ash rupees 20,000 on credit. Now, here the goods are purchased on credit. Goods are purchased, purchase account will be debited. But these are purchased on credit. So, we will credit the supplier's account. Ash. Ash is a human being. So we will credit to cash. What will be the entry framed? Purchases account debited 20,000 in the debit column to Ash 20,000 in the credit column in front of Ash. Fourth example, purchase goods rupees 20,000 on credit. Now here it is mentioned to you clearly that the goods are purchased on credit but the name of the supplier is not given to you. So what you will do, you will debit purchases because you are purchasing the goods and you will credit suppliers because some, the name of the supplier is not given. So you will simply pass the entry purchase account debited 20,000 in the debit column to supplier 20,000 in the credit column. Last one, purchase goods for rupees 20,000 from Uditya. Now as you can see, here simply it is informed to you that you have purchased goods from Uditya. It is not told to you whether these goods are purchased in cash or credit so in the absence of such uh, information you will assume it to be on credit and you will debit the purchase account because you are purchasing the goods and you will credit Uditya's uh, name or account without the word account because it's a name of a human being and what you will uh, what the entry will be framed purchase account debited 20,000 in the debit column to Uditya 20,000 in the credit column. As you can see, these are the entries. Second entry, purchase account debited 20,000 in the debit column to cash account 20,000 in the credit column for goods purchased in cash. These goods were purchased from Shreya, but it, these were in cash. So we have not recorded the name of Shreya. Third entry, goods were purchased from Ash on credit. It was clearly mentioned in the question. So we have passed the entry, purchase account debited 20,000 in the debit column to Ash 20,000 in the credit column in front of the name of ash and we have not suffixed the word account in name of ash because it's the name of a human being and in narration we have written for goods purchased on credit fourth entry as you can see purchase account debited to supplier since here the goods are purchased on credit but the name of the supplier was not given so we have simply uh, put the supplier purchase account debited 20,000 in the debit column to supplier 20,000 in the credit column then the last entry purchase account debited to Uditya in this case uh, it was not mentioned whether the goods are purchased on cash or credit so therefore in the absence of any such information we have assumed it to be a credit purchase and therefore we have debited purchases account since the goods are purchased and we have credited Uditya, Uditya without the word account because again it's a name of the human being. So we have debited purchase account with 20,000 in the debit column and we have credited Uditya with 20,000 in the credit column next to Uditya's name and in the narration for credit purchase so be very particular with the uh, format children i hope the topics discussed here are clear to you this is the assignment based on this part children which you need to do in your register you have to answer the following questions in your copies question number one you have to state the meaning of journal what is the meaning of journal we have discussed that journal is the book of original entry where the transactions are recorded as and when they occur in a chronological order. Question number two, you have to state any two advantages of journal. So you can write any two advantages. We have discussed four. For example, you can write that it provides a day-to-day -day record of the transactions in a systematic 
manner secondly you can write the advantage that it helps in the preparation of leisure trial balance etc question number 3 you have to prepare a format of journal so as we have discussed that there are five columns first column being the date column second column being the particulars column third column being the ledger folio fourth debit amount and fifth debit uh, credit amount then question number 4 you have to state the golden rules of accounting so you will write personal account debit the receiver credit the giver real account debit what comes in credit what goes out nominal account debit all expenses and losses credit all incomes and gains the next question you have to pass the necessary journal entries for the following transactions number 1 started business with cash rupees 1 lakh so what will be the entry children cash account debited 1 lakh in the debit column to capital account 1 lakh in the credit column and narration you can write for business started with cash second salary paid what will be the entry children even if the cash is, word is not given since it is a nominal account we will assume it to be in cash so we will pass the entry salary account debited 5000 in the debit column to cash account in the credit column 5000 number 3 interest received 2000 again no doubt the cash word is not given but it is a nominal account so we will assume it to be in cash and we'll pass the entry cash account debited since cash is coming in because it is an income to interest account 2000 in the credit column fourth one purchase goods for rupees 10000 from swati in cash now whenever the goods are purchased we will debit the purchase account now since here the goods are purchased in cash so we will not consider the name of the person we will simply pass the entry purchase account debited 10000 in the debit column to swati uh, to cash account in the credit column 10000 we will not record the name of swati a narration we can write for goods purchased in cash next transaction purchase goods for rupees 20000 from shreya on credit now again since we are purchasing the goods we will debit purchase account so purchase account debited 20000 in the debit column to shreya 20000 in the credit column because here we are purchasing the goods on credit and shreya has become our creditor since shreya is a creditor and creditor is a liability we have already discussed that liability carries a credit balance and for narration we can write for goods purchased from shreya on credit next transaction purchase goods for rupees 3000 now since here neither the word cash is given nor the word credit is given so in the absence of such information we will assume it to be a credit purchase as we have discussed and we'll pass the entry purchase account debited 3000 in the debit column to supplier 3000 in the credit column since the name of the supplier is not given then too we will credit supplier and lastly purchase goods for rupees 4000 in cash now here since the goods are purchased in cash purchase account debited to cash account because cash being a real account is going out So these are the entries which you need to pass in your register. These are the questions which you need to answer in your register. You have to go through the slides, go through the video once again, revise all the concepts which we have discussed here, children, and especially the rules. Practice as many questions as you can from your book as well. And in the upcoming video, we'll be proceeding further with the chapter. Thank you, children. Take care.